The Internet is a virtual sewer of misinformation, hoaxes and ignorant bunk. But even sites that try to be responsible, like Facebook, find themselves spreading disinformation. And nothing is more insidious than the so-called pandemic conspiracy theory now floating about, which alleges that coronavirus was engineered to increase vaccinations and make people rich. The documentary-style pandemic video went viral on a wide range of platforms, including Facebook. Wearing the mask literally activates your own virus. You're getting sick from your own reactivated coronavirus expressions. That's kooky former medical researcher Judy Mikovits, who claims the government has been trying to get rich off vaccines since the AIDS outbreak in the 80s. That video has been viewed millions of times, and while Facebook has taken it down, it isn't the only place to find crackpot nonsense. And now to the growing number of hoaxes popping up online. Meanwhile, the FDA is cracking down on snake oil peddlers who claim they can treat COVID-19 with ointments and silver extract. Televangelist Jim Baker received one such warning for offering an $80 silver solution. Then there is this viral video produced by discredited California doctor Thomas Cowan, claiming the virus is caused by 5G networks. Viruses are simply excretions of a toxic cell. Stephen Brill of NewsGuard, an internet trust tool, says a lot of these sites are in it for the money, and they shift their focus based on the news cycle. Before COVID-19, a lot of them said uh, that 5G technology causes cancer. Now they've shifted over to COVID-19. When asked why it took so long for Facebook to take the pandemic video down, he says they don't have enough real-life fact-checkers. They continue to believe that artificial intelligence gets misinformation, can spot it, and it can't. But as Microsoft's Bill Gates says, you're never going to be able to convince the true believers. We're in a crazy situation, so there's going to be crazy rumors. And a lot of crazies as well. All right, I'm joined now by Adam Riley of WGBH News, former CNN White House correspondent Dan Luthien, and Joanna Weiss of Experience Magazine. Dan, I was blown away by this documentary. I had never seen it until people started talking about the fact that it was taken down off of, uh, um, you know, Facebook. But, I mean, the, 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 the really disturbing thing is how many people believe it. And in the documentary, people saying, you know, I'm not going to ever take a vaccine, even if one becomes available, because it's, it's a hoax. It's just lining the pockets of people like uh, Anthony Fauci. Yeah, and I think what makes it so complicated in this scenario is that a lot of the people who are involved, whether it's this documentary or you see them releasing videos on Facebook, I've seen a number of them over the last several weeks. These are experts, if you will. I mean, they're, they're medical experts. They have doctor's degrees or they have some sort of research background. Now, it, may, it may be dubious if you dig around and investigate, you find out that there are some big red flags. But the public in general, those who are leading towards that conspiracy theory anyway, when they see doctor next to a name, it becomes much more believable. And I think that's why this kind of content floating around makes it so difficult to filter through it and find the truth. Yeah, I, I think another one of the challenges, and some of my colleagues from Northeastern University have done some terrific work on this in the New York Times. Uh, a lot of, you know, peer reviewed journals take a long time to, you know, for, for the information to come out. In this, this situation in particular, in this pandemic scenario, there have been a lot of kind of pre reviewed scientific papers that have been put out in the world. And they don't go through that lengthy scientific peer review process. They're out there, you know, for for good reason, in a sense, because it's, it's a this is a time for an open exchange of ideas. But people, particularly on certain TV networks, have been latching on to some untested ideas and then promulgating them. And it's really hard from for the viewers to to understand the difference between something that's had the real test of scientific review and something that's just been thrown out there untested. I would just add that it's made more difficult when it's not just people on certain unnamed TV networks, by which I think Joanna means Fox. I mean Fox <laughs> when I use the word. But it's made more difficult when you have the president of the United States suggesting that there is validity to certain quack remedies that are kicking around out there. It creates this sort of perfect storm in which we want to attempt to provide good information to the public. And you can frame stories all you want. You can talk about how uh, a certain expert's been discredited or the claim at the heart of the documentary is totally unsubstantiated and potentially dangerous, uh, in this case, certainly dangerous. But when there's this sort of blizzard of disinformation going on and, and massive distrust in the media to go along with it, 
sometimes it feels like fighting a losing battle. It's one we have to fight, but I'm not sure it's one we can win, sadly. You know, Adam, I mean, uh, Dan, one of the things that I always wonder about this, when the same quacks repeat the same kind of nonsense over and over, like, uh, you know, Alex Jones, a noted conspiracy theorist who's been, you know, taken to court over some of the things he said about Sandy Hook and over that, um, that this, this guy, Thomas Cowan, said the same thing, you know, that uh, the um, G5 caused cancer. So they, it's over and over again. Aren't people on to them? It's like they just transfer one thing to the next, but it's the same group of people. Ted Baker. It, it is the same group of people. And I don't know that, um, you know, even when, when they are discredited, that people are paying attention. They want to believe that there's some conspiracy behind this, that this just can't be a natural event that has occurred. So since they want to believe that, it's really hard to push them any other direction. All that journalists, journalists can do and news organizations can do is constantly report on this, right? Maybe there should be a segment on, here are the latest things and we're gonna hammer away at, They're this is true. the truth behind yeah. it. That's really the only way you can go after this. I would just add, there's a, a new podcast that The Atlantic just put out, which is entirely dedicated to the rise of conspiracy theorizing in the United States. I haven't tackled it yet. I'm always looking, as you know, Emily, from the podcast to try it. If I listened to it, I might have been raving about it today. But it's something I want to check out over the weekend, and it's very timely. You know, actually, when I was talking to Stephen Brill, he's got that thing, NewsGuard, where you can actually hover over all of these sites, and a, a green light means you're good to go, that there's, you know, it's can't say 100 percent, but 90 percent reliable. A red light means don't believe a word to say. I mean, you got to get the browser and download it and all that. But it sounds like something that could be kind of fun to toy with in terms of just checking out stuff that's bogus.